Shelby Eisenberg of Kona, Hawaii broke the USA Women's National Freediving Record in the discipline of constant weight, diving to a depth of 279 feet on a single breath of air. The event was held at Grand Cayman and took 2 minutes and 51 seconds to complete. I was born and raised in Santa Cruz, California um, and I moved to Oahu in 2009 to go to college at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Let's see, I, I really didn't originally have goals to be a deep diver. I was really interested in being able to look at the reef longer. And then from there was when I started to look into ways you could train to hold your breath longer. I've wanted to do a depth record for a while, but haven't been close to it in the past. So it's something that I've taken a couple years to um, to just slowly inch towards. So it's been this eight year process, nine year process almost, basically advanced snorkeling to um, this love for deep free diving. Not all of your ocean time is actually doing really deep dives. There's a lot of training that's shorter, shallower, repetitive dives to help build up your tolerance to carbon dioxide, build a tolerance to low O2 in your system and being able to work under those conditions. And then in the pool, that's mostly technique work, also maybe short breath holds with a high heart rate type of thing. In the free diving constant weight competition, an athlete takes a single breath on the surface and kicks themselves down to depth, usually using a monofin. Uh, it's made out of fiberglass and the foot pockets, they make custom to your foot so that your foot is really secure in there. It's really tight so that you have a very direct transfer of energy. I like harder blades. It's just sort of a, a preference thing, but there are ones that are more flexible. If you watch the video, you'll hear someone counting down. So you have a certain amount of time before your dive. I'm in my final breathe up stages, which is really just very, very relaxed breathing, trying to keep my heart rate low. You know, I keep doing these relaxed breaths and having to tell myself, okay, one more breath isn't gonna make you more ready. You're as ready as you're gonna be. Let's do this. Mentally preparing uh, and not thinking about the bottom. So I think that's when a lot of people get a lot of anxiety is when they think about going all the way to the bottom and back up. Breaking it down into parts and pieces and just thinking about accomplishing that first step, that's all I'm thinking about. So um, there are three parts of the dive and that's the positive buoyancy state, the neutral buoyancy state, and the negative buoyancy state. On my dive, I'm neutrally buoyant at 20 meters, 66 feet. And then I'm negatively buoyant until 40 meters, 132 feet. And then after 132 feet, negatively buoyant. So in that first positive buoyancy state, you have the water's pushing you back up to the surface. So that's when you have to kick a little bit harder. Seems counterintuitive, but you don't necessarily want to go faster. If you try to go too fast, sometimes you can burn more oxygen. A lot of uh, people think that the hardest part of the dive is holding your breath. A lot of spear fishermen out here and even recreational freedivers are holding their breath longer than three minutes when they're diving on the reef. So the breath hold itself on that dive, which was less than three minutes, is not the difficult part. It's equalizing your ears. That's the hardest part. So I wear my lanyard around my waist, which is basically a leash that keeps you to the lines, or if it's dark, you don't drift away. The athlete follows a safety line, and any weight the athlete wears must remain on them through the entire dive. With constant weight, you do have to bring up whatever you take down with you, so a lot of people think, oh, it's the weights that assists you down. I wear a lot less weight than, um, than a lot of people. I'm neutrally buoyant around 20 meters, which means I have to work harder on the way down, but the way up is easier, which I prefer. And so constant weight, you're allowed to wear fins. Most people wear monofin. The only thing you can't do is use the line for assistance. And you may have noticed that um, on my dive, I don't wear goggles. So even without goggles, I can still see the line. I can still see my safety divers. It's more comfortable for me to have that weightless feeling than to try to do something on land. <laughs> Running is very hard for me. <laughs> you know you're at the bottom because towards the bottom of the line, they either color it or wrap tape so that it's striped. And that's called the candy cane. <laughs> so in the candy cane 
on the line, that's when you're allowed to reach out and grab it. Because before that, if you grab the line, you're disqualified. You can touch it, but you can't secure it. So that's when you can reach out, grab the line, reach down, grab your tag, and then you're allowed one pull. Once you get to the bottom, now you're negatively buoyant. Now you have to kick hard to go back up. The safety team is just so top-notch. They know what it looks like when you're kicking strong. They know what it looks like if you're kicking weak. They're so prepared and so focused on the performer that it gives you the confidence to be able to try some of these really extreme depths. While underwater, she was able to withstand nine atmospheres of pressure, endure hypoxia, increased lactic acid buildup in her muscles, and resist the urge to breathe throughout a nearly three-minute dive. Shelby also has held two USA national records in pool discipline, swimming underwater for 410 feet and a second record at 433 feet, also on a single breath of air. It's a pair of um, Omer Carbon Stingray fins, and they've been kind enough to donate uh, blades to me over the last couple of years to do uh, some artwork on and then auction off to help uh, me get to the competitions. But I did some Kona Tiger Sharks, and I try to do something different every time. So in the past, there have been some with octopus, some with whales, hammerhead sharks. These um, have been a really fun way to fundraise. Mostly I draw on paper. <laughs> um, it's usually just once a year that I get to do the fins uh, when getting ready for competition. To me, it's a really good feeling being underwater. And even just the kick in the monofin is something that feels really good. The accomplishment feeling afterwards, no matter what depth the dive is, is something that has been unparalleled in my life. So on the 85, it was almost repressing that excitement and going, okay, stay focused. The surface is right there, but you're not done yet. Which was hard because I was really excited, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, I've really been working on this dive for probably two years. So it's been two years of just tiny little incremental progressions. It's, it's wonderful that, you know, my name is on this plaque type of thing, but there are so many people on that dive making it successful. This is not a one-person accomplishment. This is a huge team of people. Her constant weight dive ranks her among the top 20 deep dive women in history. Of course, there's that big feeling of accomplishment, sort of a, oh my God, like it happened, you know? <laughs> uh, it's almost a stunned feeling as well. So it still was a little bit of a surprise since it was the first time I had done that dip. I mean, records will get broken and that's all good, but that, that feeling can't go away.